the uh, uh, obviously huge decision that you had to make at, uh, at late in the first half when you went with Max Hall. Take us through the anatomy of a decision that uh, that you make as a head coach when you're ready to put in a backup quarterback. Well, I don't think it was a huge decision at that time. I mean, we missed some plays, some opportunities in the first half, and it was a, it was clearly a, a chance to look at uh, Max in that position and see how he handled it. Have you actually had a, an opportunity to see a film, Wiz? I have. I've watched the tape. Have yeah. you made a determination on who your quarterback will be going forward? You know, I think it's premature right now. We haven't even watched the tape with the players yet. We'll go back through it again as a coach and staff this morning and look at a lot of things that are involved, and, and then we'll make our decision based on that as the week progresses. Well, what were your impressions of Max? What were your likes and dislikes so far? You know, that's really hard to say, Paul. It was a tough game when you're down 28-7 to and uh, – you know, in those type of situations, it's always tough to, to truly evaluate that position and that player. It was uh, an opportunity to put him in there and see how he handled the offense and see if we could get something going. And, uh, you know, that's what we did. But I think we have to look at the big picture as we go forward and understand that we're 2-2. Two and two. You know, we're still tied for first in our division. I know that's, that's, a, that's not something that you really want to say with a lot of enthusiasm right now because of the way we've played. But that it, that's what it is. It's the facts. You know, we've, we've played two crappy games on the road, and we've won two games at home. And, and that's the bottom line. So we're just going to continue to work. And hopefully, actually, we've won one game at home, and we've won one on the road. So one on the road. So, you know, I think that uh, – we just got to focus on trying to get better. There's things that we can do to correct from yesterday's game that will allow us to play better, and that's going to be our focus. You know, you said it's hard to say that enthusiastically, but this year is so crazy. There are six teams that are two and two that are in first place in in the NFL this year. That uh, uh, it's it's an amazing year with the ups and downs. And you mentioned it before when when you beat the Raiders. However, you win, it really doesn't matter, does it? As long as you get wins. No, you're right. It it, it is, but it's a lot easier to sit in here and say, okay, we got the win and we'll take it, than it is to come in here after a loss like yeah. yesterday. And uh, but you know, there's there's reason why we didn't play well yesterday. I thought the first part of the game, um, offensively, we were moving the football, we were making some plays, we were doing some good things, and I think had we been able to stay with our game plan there, we would have continued to have success. But, you know, when, when, you, uh, when you turn the ball over in the red zone going down there, when you miss an open guy for a touchdown early in the game, you know, when you have a, a play that's called back for a penalty that's a touchdown, all those things can affect how, you t how your team responds. And, and obviously, we didn't do a, a a very good job at all defensively of getting them off the field. I mean, I don't care how good they are as a team, and, and I have respect for Coach Turner and certainly the Chargers, and they have a very good offense and their quarterbacks playing at a high level. But the bottom line is we have to play better. You know, we are good. We're. I, it's hard for me to say we're a good enough team because we didn't show any indications of that, and we didn't show many indications of that yesterday. But I do believe that um, w we can get it straight, we can play better, and, and – you know, we're, we're going to represent ourselves going forward better than what we did yesterday. You know, based on that, too, Wiz, uh, the fact that you are 2-2, two and two, that you are tied for the NFC West on top with two other teams, what is your message to the players going forward right now? What, what, how do you motivate them? What is your message as head coach? Well, I think really what you do is you look at your team and you tell the guys that if you're not getting the job done, I don't care who you are, you know, you're not going to play. I, I think that this is four years ago when we, when we first started this, it was, uh, you know, we weren't Weren't, we didn't have as many players that were good football players on the team. We have more of those type of players now. But, you know, I don't care what your status is. I don't care what you've done. We're just going to look at it as to where we are now. And if you're not doing what you're supposed to do, then you're not going to play. I would rather go in there and play with guys that uh, want to work hard, that want to do it the right way. And listen, l listen. Let's be clear about one thing. Our players worked hard last week. We had a good week of practice. We've got good guys on this team. Um, you know, we played a poor game yesterday. It's unfortunate because we've had two of those games so far. But, you know, we're just going to we're gonna make sure that, that our team understands that we're, we're going to make some changes if we have to in order to get the right spark going. And, and I feel like we will. You know, I, like I said, it's a long season. we got 12 games left in the regular season, and uh, we are – tied for first in our division you know the thing that's really scary is that there's the the best record in the nfc is only one game ahead of mm -hmm. us you know so so there's a lot of football left 
I, I believe that we, we're going to get it fixed, and uh, we still have a chance to be a good football team, and, and that's the way we're going to approach it. You know, a lot of the guys on the defense yesterday were talking about the errors and so forth. How much of it is between the ears on defense, mental errors, alignment, uh, and so forth? That's, that's the biggest part of it. I mean, it's not the physical effort. It, it's more of uh, not being in the right place, not using the right technique, and it's hard because, you know, we work on that in practice during the week, and you see the looks that, you, that your opponent's going to do, and then you work on those things. But as you, when you get into a game, things happen faster, things happen a little bit differently, and uh, for whatever reason, we're not responding to that very well. At least we didn't yesterday. Now, you know, I think that our defense has got a little bit of a bad rap because two of our wins have been a direct result of, of our defense making a significant significant contribution you know we turned the ball over how many times against St. Louis and our defense bailed us out and certainly last week with those punts and those turnovers on those punt return teams our defense bailed us out mm -hmm. again so you know to me there's signs that that our defense can do some things you know we, we kept Oakland out of the end zone last week made them kick field goals in a tough tough situation and that's what you have to do but what we have to get to is more consistent play you know offensively obviously we have to play better defensively we have to play more consistently we have to get that team that's going to show up and keep the players keep the other teams out of the end zone and, and and that's what we have to work at. And, you know, I think we have pieces there to work with, and we're going to go back to work this week, and I know our team will be motivated. Talk about uh, what Gates does to team schematically. It's easy for us to watch on TV and say, guard where that guy goes. But, but, but what, is, what does he bring to the table that's just so different than the average tight end? Well, you know what, I think he's a part of a very good offense. The quarterback has a good feel for him. But um, if you think about early in the game yesterday, there was a couple of times where they threw a little check down pass to the back and he runs for 20 yards. And part of that's maybe because you're trying to put two guys on Antonio Gates. You know, everybody says, well, why don't you just du double him? Well, you know, it's hard to play defense with nine guys if you're going to take two of your 11 guys and, and cover Gates. So, um, you know, they have a lot of weapons. They do a very good job with their scheme. Obviously, the quarterback and the tight end have had years of working together at a high level. So it is something that's difficult. And we did a, a number of things yesterday where we tried to put our players in positions where we could make sure that we were aware of 85. But, you know, at some point during the game, you gotta, you got to play your defense, and that's going to encompass one of your players having to cover the guy. And we didn't, that's where we failed, you know, when we had matchups with him, they won. And, and, I, and I said this yesterday, you know, when we get Larry matched up one-on-one -on -one with somebody, I don't care who it is, our expectation is that he's going to win. And most of the time, Larry does. And, you know, that's what happened yesterday. We've, got, we've just got to do a better job of, of uh, making sure we don't allow that to happen as much as it did yesterday. Wiz, what is, what is your biggest concern going into the game against the Saints this weekend? <laughs> well, you know, it, it, it's really hard the day after a game to sit here and talk about concerns for our team. I mean, if you look at yesterday's game, I've got concerns everywhere. You know, I, we, we don't have long enough on this on this segment to <laughs> yeah. talk about that. But on the flip side, I think you have to be you have to look at it from the standpoint of, you know, I feel like we have a chance to be a better football team than what we've shown. And so how do you do that? How do you approach it? I think you, you, you obviously you go into this game yesterday and you analyze it and you look at it with your team and you have to be, um, I guess, there, there can't be any egos involved. You got to look at it from mm -hmm. the standpoint of, we didn't get it done in, in all facets of our organization yesterday. And what do we have to do to correct it? And I believe that we have the guys that are willing to do that. You know, we have enough leadership. We have enough good football players that we just have to come together. And, and we've got to improve on that. And that's really the way you have to approach it. You know, it's not a, okay, I'm going to fix this. I'm going to fix this. I'm going to fix that. I mean, if you start trying to plug all the different holes in the dike, you know, that's difficult. I think that we, everybody has to take ownership in the fact that we didn't get it done. But we also have to understand that we're two and two, that we are tied for first place in our division, and that it's not like we're going to blow up the whole team and start over. That's not anywhere by any stretch what I'm talking about. We're going to correct it. We're going to make sure that we sit down as a group of players and coaches and staff and, and talk about what we need to do, and we're going to go out and work at it this week and be a better football team next week. And does that go for the O line as well? I know the Chargers end with nine sacks. Is that a byproduct of their big lead and they're, you know, pinning the ears back? They can just come without worrying about it, or is there something consistent there that you've identified maybe that needs to be addressed? Well, you know, there, there's a lot of things that went wrong yesterday, and that, that's one of those areas. You know, I think that uh, um, some of it, that's on everybody. You know, we get, a lot of it is the fact that uh, they had the lead and they obviously have nothing to lose by taking chances with the rush or the blitzes and, um, 
you know that's that's what the position that you put yourself in by have being in a game like that but uh uh you know, we're going to continue to, to prepare the way we've done offensively. I know that we had some things that we felt very good about yesterday, and we had some opportunities early in the game. It's disappointing that the game got out of hand, and, um, you know, that's the byproduct of having a game that got out of, out of hand yesterday. So, um, you know, we're going to look at everything. But it, it's you look at last night's game um, between Chicago and, and the Giants. and yeah, That first you know, half. Similar situation. Yeah. They had nine sacks in the first half. It's tough when you got noise, when they're able to pin their ears back and get a jump. You know, that's that's what's so difficult about playing on the road in the NFL. And uh, th I'm not making excuses for it. We obviously can't do what we did yesterday. But, uh, um, you know, we're going we're gonna to correct the things that we can correct. We're going to maybe uh, try to help out uh, our tackles in some of those positions. But a couple of those things yesterday were just flat – Mental errors, you know, where we made mistakes, and those things are certainly correctable. Talk about your defensive line rotation. Uh, still an open competition at nose guard right now? Well, I mean, every position's an open competition, mm -hmm. isn't it, Doug? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, I don't know why there's a focus on our on our defense or on a nose tackle position. We, you know, we've had a number. We've had three guys that have been working very hard, and at that position, you can't play all three. So you're going to have to make decisions during the weeks of of who you're going to put up and who you're not going to put up. Mm -hmm. So. You know, that's something that's always subject to change. Is the running game, Wiz, are, are, are you going to focus at all on being more balanced? When you say that you, you know, when you, when you were talking about uh, you had to come out of your game plan, was that, was that because you were going to run the football more and you had to come out of it once the score got lopsided? Or is that a lot to do about nothing? Well, you know, I think that if you, when you, where you are in the game as far as being able to run the football and staying in your regular and your two tight end sets, and, you know, those things kind of go out the window because defenses aren't going to really respect the the uh, ability to run or pass out of those situations they're going to play for the pass right. and or they're going to take chances against you knowing that if they get beat for a player hit for a play it really doesn't make any difference so you know your offensive game plan that you work so hard on during the week half of that is gone once the game gets out of hand like that and, and uh so, you know, there's not a – I don't think that there's more of a focus on running the football or less of a focus on running the football. You know, I think we're going to hopefully continue to have a mix. That's the way we're going to try to be successful. And, um, you know, there was some good things in the run game yesterday early. We, mm -hmm. got a, we obviously got away from that when we got down trying to get something going. And, uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to continue to try to run the ball, but we're also not going to be afraid to spread it out and throw the ball either because we did have some success early in the game doing that yesterday. No.